Scripture tonight, and uh, we're going to look at a uh, name that's given to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that identify a lot of His character, uh, personality, and attributes. Amen. And we're going to look at these uh, this evening, if it be uh, the Lord's will. But Isaiah chapter number nine. Let's pick up reading in verse number six, and we'll read verses six and seven, and we'll spend our time in verse number six. Uh, here this evening. Isaiah chapter number 9, verse number 6, the Word of God tells us, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And notice this, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Amen. And of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from hence, henceforth, uh, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Let's bow our heads and go to the Lord in prayer and ask the Lord to bless the reading of his word this evening. Dear, kind, and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we are thankful uh, for this time that you've allowed us to come to your house this evening to worship thee in spirit and truth. And Lord, we are thankful for the health you've given us, dear Lord, to, to be here tonight and for the very breath of life you've given us to enjoy your creation today, Heavenly Father. And Lord, we are thankful for uh, this time that we've set aside to come together to worship thee in spirit and truth. And Lord, I pray tonight, now as we look to the bread of life this evening, Father, I pray that uh, uh, you would open up our ears and our hearts to the preaching of thy word, dear Lord, that we would learn something tonight to help us in our daily walk with thee and uh, Lord, that uh, uh, that you'd be with me tonight as I preach, Heavenly Father. Lord, I'd ask and pray that you give me that anointing of the Holy Ghost to preach with clarity of thought and clarity of speech and strengthen my voice and my lungs that I may be able to declare thy blessed word. And Lord, we just thank you and praise you, Father, for the testimonies and songs that we've already heard this evening. And Lord, I pray now that you would speak to us through thy word, Heavenly Father. Give us spiritual food. Give us spiritual manna from heaven tonight. Uh, Heavenly Father, and Lord, I pray tonight if there is one here that's in our midst tonight that does not know Thee as Lord and Savior, Lord, I pray that You convict their heart of sin, that You draw them into Yourself, and Lord, that they would come forward tonight and receive that gift of salvation, dear Lord, and ask Jesus Christ to come into their heart and save them before it's eternally too late. And Father, may we take this opportunity, dear Lord, as we acknowledge this holiday season, dear Lord, to uh, realize and remind ourselves, Heavenly Father, that Jesus Christ truly is the reason that we celebrate this season. And Father, may we tell other the good news and the great gift that's been given to all of mankind and the gift of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, I pray now that you would bless in the remainder of the service, for it's in Christ's name we do ask it all. And uh, amen. amen. Notice here in verse number 6, For unto us a child is born, Unto us the Son is given, and the government shall be upon His shoulder. And beloved, there are numerous Old Testament uh, scriptures that prophesy about the coming of Jesus Christ and the birth of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And beloved, when you go through and you're doing your Bible reading and you get over to the Gospel accounts of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, uh, the religious people of the time, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, should have been the ones that were able to identify Jesus Christ as the Messiah, yet their eyes were blinded to the truth, and he came into his own, and his own uh, rejected uh, his own rejected him, did they not? And so, beloved, uh, what a travesty that is! All throughout uh, the the scriptures talks about Jesus Christ and how uh, those at that time could miss that truth, uh, but they surely did. And beloved, you know what? Nothing's changed today. There are still people that are blinded to the truth of God's Word and still reject Jesus Christ today. Amen? Amen. Uh, but notice here uh, in verse number 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall, uh, 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 shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called, now notice this, Wonderful and Counselor. 
Uh, beloved, uh, Jesus Christ is a wonderful counselor, if you will. Uh, beloved, uh, He is one who guides through counsel. Uh, beloved, you remember in our study in the book of James, if any of us lack wisdom, we need to do what? Let Him ask, and it shall be given to us. Amen. And beloved, the best counsel that you and I can receive tonight in regard to any issue of life is answered in the Word of God. Yes. When it comes to marriage, yeah. uh, when it comes to business, when it comes to church, yeah. when it comes to hobbies, when it comes to activity, when it comes to lifestyle, when it comes to eternity, when it comes to judgment, the answers can be found in the Word of God. Amen. Uh, beloved, you don't have to go to the newsstand and pull out a newspaper and read the horoscope. You don't have to do that. You don't have to go to the mall up here and go down the bestseller aisle and pick out the latest book about religion and philosophy. Beloved, God has given us the answers from His Word. Praise be to God. Amen. And beloved, uh, when I find myself under duress, when I find myself uh, uh, in, a, in a state of confusion and I don't know what decision to make in regard to the circumstance or circumstances that I'm confronted with when I'm seeking God's will for my life and I'm not for sure which direction to go beloved, I enter into my prayer closet open up the word of God and ask God to give me counsel and give me direction, amen amen, yeah. uh, beloved, uh, yes it's good uh, to talk to the preacher. It's good to talk to the Sunday school teacher, to the deacons, uh, another pastor or, or another friend or brother or sister in Christ and get some counsel or some suggestion or direction from them. But beloved, ultimately, we need to seek after God's counsel. Amen. Amen. And beloved, I found out that if an individual's counsel don't line up with the Word of God, uh, you better not take heed to it and put yeah. too much stock into it. Yeah. It's only going to make the situation a whole lot worse. Amen. Uh, beloved, if somebody can't give you good godly edification and counsel, then there's something wrong. You better stay away from that. And beloved, a lot of Christians today receive too much worldly counsel and receive a lot of misinformation that simply is not true. Uh, beloved, there are some things that people come up and ask me about that I, I don't mean this cruel, but some things they ask me is almost laughable sometimes. And I'm like, if you have been saved any amount of time and going to church as much as you say that you're going to church and faithful to God and faithful to His Word, unless you're a new, born, uh, recently been born again or a new convert and a babe in Christ, you know, uh, uh, beloved, there are some things you ought to know, amen? And so somebody that's just recently saved and just beginning to get into God's Word, sure they're going to have questions. And sure they're not going to uh, uh, know exactly where to look and find the answers. And that's where us that are mature saints that have been saved for a period of time can help nurture them and bring them along and give them proper guidance and counsel. Amen. But beloved, for somebody that's been going to church for 25 or 30 years and some of the things that they come up and ask about, I'm like, what on earth are you paying attention to when you're sitting in the pew at the house of God? Are you listening to the Sunday school teacher? Are you listening to the preacher? Where is your mind at? What is your mind on? Yeah. And beloved, that's why the Bible tells us that we need to be more ready to hear than to speak. That's why God gives us two ears and one mouth. He's telling us that listening is twice as important than speaking, Amen. you see. And so uh, the Bible tells us in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse number 16, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of the angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. And beloved, what a wonderful summation of the gospel that we have, have right here. And beloved, that's the message that we need to share with others give them proper counsel in order to be what? To be saved and to be born again. Amen? And the Bible tells us in Colossians chapter 2, verse number 3, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Uh, beloved, God has all the answers. Uh, beloved, people ask me questions sometimes, and I'll just be honest with you. Uh, sometimes I'll tell them, I don't know. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with being honest and saying you don't know. Uh, but beloved, if, if it's a scriptural question that they ask me, 
Uh, beloved, I'm going to try to find the answer. And I'm going to get into God's Word, and I'm going to try to find the Scriptures that relate to that topic, and I'm going to pray and ask God to give me wisdom and discernment to rightly divide the Word of God, and that way I can help guide another brother and sister in truth and in righteousness. Amen. 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 Uh, Amen. But, beloved, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Uh, beloved, that's one danger about technology today. Everybody breaks out their iPad, breaks out their iPhone. And let me tell you something. There's a lot of knowledge in this device. But because there's knowledge doesn't mean there's wisdom. That's right. That's right. Amen. Uh, beloved, wisdom is how you apply the knowledge yes. that is given to you. Amen. And there's a world of difference between the two. Amen. And beloved, in regard to uh, the return of Jesus Christ in the book, uh, book of Daniel, one of the things that Daniel said that would abound and increase was that of knowledge in the end time. And beloved, if you want to find facts, if you want to find data, if you want to find numbers, if you want to find historical facts, hey, all the knowledge is at your fingertips. But beloved, just because you have the knowledge doesn't necessarily mean you have wisdom. Amen. And there's a world of difference between the two. Yes, sir. And the Bible tells us in Psalm chapter 119, verse number 24, uh, thy testimonies are also are my delight and my counselors. And so, beloved, pick up the Word of God and start reading the Word of God. And what I have found out from my own personal experience is I'll go through and read something and boom, the answer jumps off the page on something that I haven't even thought about a question about. You see. And, beloved, sometimes when you have questions, you get into the Word of God, you find the answers. Amen? Amen. And sometimes you find answers even when you're not looking for them. Why is that true? Why does that happen when you read the Word of God? Because it is a living Word. That's why. Amen. God's Word is a living Word, and it speaks to each and every one of us. Praise be to God. And then notice here the next thing. Uh, mighty God, or all-powerful, or God of power. And beloved, I don't think any of us uh, tonight have any difficulty in regard to accepting that and believing that. I don't know how many of y'all had the opportunity Monday uh, to go out and see the Christmas star uh, that's been recently advertised. Uh, uh, Anthony texted me and said, hey, just want to let you know uh, I was out working and saw the star on the horizon and wanted you to be on the lookout for it. And so me and Christy went out there and uh, uh, don't ask us for directions. <laughs> uh, we're having a hard time discerning north and south well, we're standing out in the dark. <laughs> and so finally, uh, uh, I told Christy, I said, well, I know Granger County's that way. <laughs> we're standing here at Granger County's that way. And I said, that's north. And I said, now we work our way around and try to find out. Well, that didn't work out, so she pulled up the compass on her phone. And uh, they told us and said on the news, if you look at a certain degree southwest, you'll be able to find it. And so anyway, we was able to see the Christmas star. And so we were looking at it, and I'm like, well, we don't own a telescope, but I do have a set of binoculars. And so she ran in there and got the set of binoculars, and we got to zoom in and got to look at it a little bit more closer. We went over and woke Dad up and, and, and got him off the couch and drug him out in the cold so he could see it through the binoculars. And then I saw some real nice pictures posted on Facebook in regard to that. Now, is that not miraculous Amen. when you look at the heavens yes. Yes. and all the stars and by the way, the Word of God tells us that in regard to the stars, that God has every one of them named. Amen. He knows them personally. Why? Because He created them. Amen. Amen. And so, beloved, what a miracle it is when you look at the galaxy and the universe around us and it holds itself in place and it holds itself in order. You cannot tell me that there is not a divine God. Amen. 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 An all-powerful God that not only holds this earth in orbit, but takes care of the rivers, the oceans, the streams, the mountains, our living bodies. Now, I know some of our bodies might be a little bit more alive than others uh, because of her age and her health, but you know what? If you want to feel a miracle tonight, just take your hand and put it right here on your heart. Amen. And I hope you hear a the thump, the thump, the thump. Yeah. Now, about, some might be a little bit faster than others. Thumpy, thumpy, thump. Some might be thump. Well, like that back there. But you know what? When you hear that, is that not a miracle? Amen. And everything, how the human body works. Amen. Oh, so certainly we have an all-powerful, mighty God. 
The Bible tells us in the Philippians chapter 4, verse number 13, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Uh, beloved, our strength does not come from going out and uh, lifting weights, running marathons, uh, eating healthy, which all, all these things, beloved, there's nothing wrong with. And uh, beloved, if you, if you feel led to do that, by all means, certainly do that. But beloved, for the Christian, yes. for the believer, yes. our strength comes from the Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes. The Bible tells us in Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong. Yes. The next three words are critical. Be strong in the Lord and in the power yes. of His might. Amen. And of course, we know this is introducing the armor of God in Ephesians chapter number 6 that God gives to each and every believer to equip themselves in spiritual warfare. And beloved, we can't have victory if we put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ and let God strengthen us and take the spiritual armor that God gives us and enter into warfare. Greater is He that is in us than he that is in the world. Amen. We are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ that loved us. Amen. Amen. But thanks be to God which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, beloved, let me tell you something. When you try to battle the flesh and you try to battle the world and you try to battle the devil in your own strength and in your own wisdom, you will wind up a spiritual casualty every single time. That's right. But beloved, when we're empowered by the Holy Spirit of God, and we let Christ be the source of our strength. Uh, beloved, I'll tell you what, the sky's the limit, is it not? Yes. Uh, our lives would be totally different if we would just have that mindset. Psalm chapter 147, verse number 5, Great is our Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. Great is our Lord and of great power. Now notice this, His understanding is infinite. Uh, beloved, uh, there are things that happen in my life and things that happen in your life. Uh, beloved, that you and I simply just don't understand. But we need to remind, remind ourselves of two things. One is that His wisdom is infinite. He knows all, does He not? He's omniscient. And beloved, His ways are higher than our ways, and His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And so, beloved, when you find yourself asking God about certain things, sometimes the best thing to do is just take a step back and just trust Him. Lord, I don't understand. I don't know why. But Father, I'm just going to continue to trust in Thee and put my faith in You. And then one day God will reveal to you what's taken place and what's going on in your life and what happened. In His time, He'll do that. But notice here the next thing that's mentioned here in verse number 6. Uh, or verse, uh, yes, verse number 6. Uh, it should be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. <laughs> now I like that, don't you? Yes. Uh, oh, God gives eternal salvation, does He not? Yes. Uh, beloved, uh, everlasting Father. In other words, once we're in the family, we're not going to be disowned. Amen. Yeah. Now I know there were times growing up that mom and dad probably thought about disowning me. Maybe they did disown me, and I just don't know about it because of some of the choices I made and some of the, the decisions I made. Uh, I would do something and uh, or say I was going to do something and mom and dad would look at me, son, you need to listen to me. We're trying to guide you in the right direction. You don't need to do this. Yes, I do and yes, I'm going to. And so finally they just get frustrated and they quit arguing. And then when I make that decision, I'm like, whoa, mom and dad really knew what they was talking about. I shouldn't have done this at all. You know, and not all the time, but sometimes they said, I tried to tell you, I tried to warn you. And sometimes the best teacher is experience, is it not? Yeah. You see. But beloved, we have an eternal Father that in spite of falling short of His glory every day, in spite of making wrong choices every day, in spite of making bad decisions every day, He still loves His children. With an eternal love, praise Amen. be to God. Amen. And will always be in the family as a child of God. Right. Now, beloved, that's something to rejoice about tonight. Right. Yes, sir. Uh, Exodus chapter 3, verse number 14. Uh, this is when God's speaking to Moses. And uh, certainly Moses had the typical Baptist mentality. 
You know, God was calling him to lead the Jewish people out of their bondage, out of, uh, out of Egypt. And Moses come up with every single possible excuse he could come up with. Well, I, I can't do this. I don't talk well. You know, and finally he got to the point, well, when I go back and report to him, who should I tell him sent me? Exodus chapter 3, verse number 14, and God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, Israel, I am, has sent me unto you. He is that great I am. He's in our past. He's in our present. And beloved, he's already in your future. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. And remember Jesus when he made himself equal to God the Father. And he made reference to being that I am. You know, the Jews were proud of their uh, genealogy and proud of their heritage. And they put their faith and trust in being in the lineage and the stock of Abraham. Now, beloved, their faith and their uh, uh, their faith was uh, truly misplaced, was it not? They needed to put their faith and trust in God, Jehovah. Amen. But they were counting on being uh, the seed of Abraham to get into heaven. Now, beloved, verily, verily, I say unto thee, you must be born again to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Remember in John chapter 8, verses 53 through 58, Jesus is talking with the religious crowd and the conversation develops. Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets are dead? Whom makest thou thyself? Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honoreth me, of whom you say that he is your God. Yet you have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say, I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his saying. That's pretty strong language. You don't know him and you say that you do. You're a liar because God cannot lie. Amen. Amen. Notice here, verse 56. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. See, Abraham believed God. And God counted to him for righteousness. Why? Because he believed God and he had faith in God. Amen? Amen. And notice here, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say to you, before Abraham was, and here's what set him on fire, I am. Yeah. He was making himself equal to God the Father. Uh, but he is that great I am. Amen. Uh, eternal Father. Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 8. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Uh, but don't you wish everything in life was that consistent and you could depend on that? 